Okay, we got a sequel. We gotta have a lot of sequels in this month. Um, but we just talked about the original yesterday. Now it's time to talk Hell House LLC 2. Let's get into this. So this movie, from what I can gather, is a Shudder original. As a matter of fact, this is the whole reason that I even got Shudder for this month. Um, there is a lot of movies that I have not seen in a very long time, and some movies that I'm like, oh my god, this is on Shudder? It's just an added bonus. But I, we specifically got Shudder in this house for Hell House LLC 2. Um, it did not disappoint. It really did not. This was a super freaky deaky movie. It upped the scares and um, supernatural occurrences from the original. It it did lack a little bit of the slow burn paranoia feeling, which is understandable given what they're going for. The original was a found footage film. Um, it was put together by supposedly a documentarian. This movie is a sequel to a found footage film. Now we've seen this before uh, with Blair Witch and then Blair Witch 2. The interesting part of this one is they don't take the cinematic way out. Whereas Book of Shadows became a feature film as opposed to a found footage horror movie, this one continues on with the found footage genre. And the way they do it is they piece certain things together. They piece footage that was found in um, the Abaddon Hotel, the location of the original and this one, as well as TV spots and interviews from the original documentarian uh, pieces together like Facebook streams of people that happened to go to that hotel and then went missing. It's very, very interesting the way they did it. And this filmmaker or executive, I'm sorry, I don't exactly remember what he was, but this lone guy um, decided to sit, to sit down and cut all of this footage together in his own way. And the way he cut it, it tells the narrative. It goes in between the exploration of the Abaddon Hotel to try to find answers as to what happened and interviews for this TV show where they're basically sitting down saying, you know, this is all a bunch of hooey, isn't it? This is all fake. It's fake news. And this one guy's like, I don't know what it is. One guy's saying, oh, it totally is. And the other guy's like, no, this shit's real. So it's very interesting the way they cut it together. Uh, it created a very interesting, compelling narrative stream, um, if not discombobulated, which I think may have been the intention there. Uh, some of the most unsettling things that we've seen in this film, granted these clips did go on a little bit long, uh, but they were still effective, was toward the beginning, when you're starting to see some of the Facebook streams from a kid that broke into the hotel, uh, you start to see um, this vlog for uh, this couple that's coming back from a fashion show and they happen to pick up a hitchhiker It's unsettling. It's frightening. It's Really good and the way this Documentarian or this guy that's cutting the footage together manages to do this and he shows The footage from different ways he enhances it like you would see in a lot of paranormal investigation shows like ghost hunters and stuff like that where they kind of um blow up the image a little bit or lighten it so that you can see things in the background a little bit easier. And it it works. It's very, very, very effective. So you have essentially two different stories going on here, a psychic and the documentarian who was kind of behind the camera for the original movie. And you've got these, these two groups of people have their own motivations for going in there. And then there's also a film crew that's specifically there to debunk it and they're interested in the history of this hotel. So you've got all of these different stories colliding. Uh, you're finding out the history of the Abaddon. You start to figure out why the events of the first movie happened in the first place. I will say the ending feels a bit strange. This might be another movie that warrants multiple viewings. Um, I was left... How do I want to say this? I was left underwhelmed by the ending, but I can't exactly put my finger on why. Like, it had the scares, it had the uh, background, you know, it had the exposition dump, which might, now that I'm saying it out loud, that might have been my biggest issue. Um, I think that movies like this work better when there's still a mystery involved, but given the fact that we got so much exposition here, I think it 
actually kind of took something away from the movie. That might be what underwhelmed me, but I don't have the time this month, but I'm, I think I need to rewatch this movie. Um, we're going to have Shudder for a little while, so I think I need to rewatch this movie just to kind of see, is that what it was? But up till probably the last 10, 15 minutes, this was a true to its core sequel. Um, it didn't fall into a lot of other traps that lots of other sequels do. It kept very, very faithful to the original source material, to the original tone. Um, you didn't get a Sinister and then a Sinister 2 deal. No, no, no. It, it kept that tone solid. So that is my thoughts on the sequel, Hell House LLC 2. If you've got Shudder, you've got this movie, and I recommend watching it. Even though I had some qualms with the ending, it's worth a viewing, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe the ending actually was really good for what they're doing, because there was a lot of things said and a lot of setup there, and a lot to make me feel very uncomfortable. Um, there, again, there are scenes that are not going to leave this brain, and some of those were in the ending. So maybe I'll change my tune with the second viewing. I don't know. But if you've got Shudder, it's there. If you don't have Shudder and you're thinking about it, this is a good enough reason to do it. Uh, if not, I don't know what to tell you, man. Go over to your friend's house who has Shudder. It's Halloween. Why don't you have Shudder? They're not paying me to say this. This is not a paid advertisement. Please give me money, Shudder. So that's today for the 31 vlogs of Halloween. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Did I talk you into Shudder? Can I have my money now, please? And, um, or not. And also, let's get those votes coming on Sandpire. Hashtag Sandpire yes or hashtag Sandpire no. Leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you thought about the movie or if you want to check this out now. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's see. Today is Saturday. Oh, yeah. You guys have a live stream tomorrow. Um, we're going to take a small break from the found footage, but we're coming back in a big bad way on Monday. You guys have your first live stream tomorrow with me and my buddy Chris Chavez from Hardly Awesome Podcast. And the reason that he's on this show History Creeps. History Creeps is an amazing podcast where they dive into some of the paranormal and mysterious past, um, not just here in America, but worldwide. And it's it's really cool the way they go about it. Uh, they don't fall down on one side like, oh, obviously this is paranormal or obviously this is bunk. No, they talk about it, they debate it, and they, they discuss what we know about some of these mysteries and I, I think that it's awesome the way that they tackle it. So seeing as though he's also my friend, we got to have him on the live stream and we're going to be talking about something kind of cool, something kind of interesting that just kind of fell into our laps. So make sure you're tuning in for that tomorrow night. Um, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because I'm going to be telling you guys the time. We're going to get that figured out. And hopefully I will see you guys on the first live stream for this channel because, yeah, the other live stream was on Facebook. So yeah, our first live stream. See you guys tomorrow. Again, comment, like, subscribe. See ya.